Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. We're back in the campaign. Let's is let's play episode four. So I'm hovering on the new radar copter that I built just after the last episode finished and upped it up above our new resource area. I'll get the UI on, there it is down there. I have a cargo hauler sitting in there ready to build something for me. And Ruger has graciously provided me with a very, very nice solution to uh, well, this problem that I'm having. Uh, someone actually posted in the comments, I'm very sorry, I don't remember your name offhand, but uh, someone suggested and built a little resource base, and it was really cool. And if Ruger hadn't have done this, I would probably be using it now. But we'll get you out of play. Bye-bye, uh, and we'll hop onto the Blackguard. Oh, the Blackguard. Oh, yeah, I forgot the, the teleport button. Yeah, um... And I have something to build. I actually have quite a lot from Ruger today. Um, he has built some awesome little refinery platforms. And the reason I'm using these rather than just using like a resource float like I normally would is they look badass. Uh, let's get these up. You'll see I have another thing to show you as well. And I'll be introducing you to this guy in a little bit. For now we have the drilling rig. And I want to build this one first. Um, in case we run out of resources while we're doing stuff, and this will allow us to continue to generate resources. So let's hop on board the drilling rig. And let's get it configured. Or where's the chair? There should be a chair built shortly. There we go. Um, and we want to bring this guy down just an itty bit. Okay, maybe up a wee bit. That looks nice. It only, it's the difference between one power, it, it isn't a concern. But we now have a drilling rig, hurrah! Uh, let's get that on so that the bottom spins. Not that great. <laughs> there's uh, eight um, resource thingies on this. Uh, there's a nice big engine on it too. What are these? These are micro 100s. Very nice, but he piped them all up properly for us. Oh, this looks great. Oh, there's three of them. And another little corner here with our controller and stuff. This is a lovely little build, isn't it? Uh, well, that's the first part of it. We have another part. And it's going to sort out our oil problem. So let's get another constructible. We have our oil derrick. And let's see what happens when we start building this guy. We are getting quite low on resources, though. So we'll have to see how this goes. No, get into the chair. We need a flyby there. There we go, in the chair, and I wonder do we have engine power yet? No. Come on, I want to lower it a wee bit. Or do I? This thing's really tall if I remember right. Looks freaking great though. Should maybe paint these guys, but the um, the other structure's not painted either, so... Uh, I think I'll leave them as they are. They're going to be mostly out of play anyway, but they might look pretty good with a nice little black paint job. Hmm. Well, there is actually a really sneaky way of doing this. Like, if you just want to get your sh uh, any ship that you've built to look different, your paint, your default color is this one here. So, if you want to paint the entire thing a different color, you can select that one and change it, and it'll actually change the color on the entire ship. And that's because the color palette is saved per vessel. So all of these colors here are based on the vessel that you have. And it's, like I say, default color is this one here. So you can change this to whatever you want. There we go. A wonderfully pink. Oh god, that's horrible. Um, yeah. Let's not go all the way black. Let's go... Right there. Yeah, it looks a little bit more oil darky, I think. Let's go over to this guy as well and change the default color on him too. No, I didn't want to select it. It doesn't need to be that black either. But there. Looks good. Well, looks a little better. Not a lot better. Could do with some highlights and stuff like that. But anyway, yeah. That's being slowly built. Why is this being very slowly built? 92%. I mean, you're within range. You've got resources on board. But it is taking its sweet time. Well, that's just how slow it builds, I guess. Oh, maybe only the front two ones are in range. That must be it. 
or something like that. Anyway, it's built. Sweet! Now, we haven't got enough resources left for the last bit, but I'm going to get it in, uh, on the go anyway. Because it looks really cool, and it's going to have to sit here and wait it out. Now, we have the other fleet very nearby for defense, and after I get this guy started, we will bring the other fleet over just to keep this a little bit protected. I have ideas. I'll probably put some sort of coastal cannons here, uh, and probably more likely I'll take that place out and put the cannons over here because that protects that inlet and that sort of open area over there. And that would really help, you know, if there's any anything coming down this way and anything coming down this way, it'll be able to protect this from it just by having our coastal cannons here. And we could actually put like a big missile system in the middle here or something like that. I don't know. Actually, missiles aren't long enough range. Hmm. Well, different problem for a different day. We'll sort that out in the future. That leaves only down this direction our problem. So we'll have to have either some sort of floating defense or maybe just have something back here that can defend it as well. Uh, the trouble with having, you know, another one really far away is it would be difficult to resupply it. And we would have to build a standalone support structure. Uh, now I have the ones from my Coastal Cannons uh, videos and I'll possibly be using one of them but it's very expensive for what I want it for here and I might actually custom build something that's a little bit more sensible for the job but let's have a look at how our build is getting on here very slowly um oh wait no it's mostly underwater <laughs> uh let us hop into the ship where are you island outpost and hop in here hiya now, have we got engine power yet? Can we go up? We can't go up yet. Why can we not go up yet? I would like to go up, please. Okay. Elevator's out of service. Why, why can we not? Oh, we have no... <laughs> no fortress thingies on the bottom yet. And we are totally out of resources. This was my fear. Well... We can just pull these guys out of play for now. Let's repaint this guy quickly as well. Just seeing as we're doing with all the other ones. Uh, just there's a little bit of a, you know, continuation here. Looks nice with the black art. Actually, I might make all of my resource stuff this sort of washed out grey black colour. It's actually, I think, the same as my fleet trim, but, you know, it works. It looks nice. And it will at least have them all looking the same. So, anyway. That is that problem sorted. Basically, all there is on this thing, as I should probably have mentioned this, is a bunch of resource stuff. There's a refinery here for dealing with every little bit of fuel that we need. It's not a big one. It does the job, though. And we have a couple of resource stores that are not yet built. Hmm. There's a lot more to go in here. But as the building completes, and we'll pull that a place so that it doesn't fall apart, but it does have power, so that's okay. Uh, let's pull all. Plimp. And get, actually, this fleet here. Uh, right here. Just somewhere a little bit safer. Or, well, a little bit uh, of a more reactive place. Somewhere we can work from. And we will cut here. And I'm going to go over to the other platform. I get set up for building a new toy, I think. Okay, so we're not at our base. We are in the vehicle designer. Because I have a little bit of a plan. Now, the other ship that you've seen in the little blueprint was the Bulldog. And it is a fast attack hydrofoil that I'll be showing off very shortly. And I'll tell you more about it then. But the thing about that ship is, A, it's really powerful. And it's very, very cheap. And B, it's very fast. So we need a cargo ship of some description that's able to keep up with it. Now, rather than going all the way to building a fast aircraft, because that's going to have a lot of development time, and the Bulldog itself doesn't really warrant having a, an aircraft support vehicle that's going to cost as much as it is, we're going to go for something much, much smaller. So I'm thinking of hydrofoil. Hydrofoils are easy to make fast, and I'll make a small, simple hydrofoil with enough storage to pick up all of the debris that the, uh, the Bulldog's going to be creating, and it's going to be able to get away from, you know, or follow up behind it, clean up nicely, and come home with it and dump off its stuff. So if we have a nice fast hydrofoil that can run support, uh, it'll make the Bulldog a much, much more effective weapon because we'll be able to take advantage of all of the resources that the enemy is dropping. So.
Okay, I'll be honest, that is not what I had in mind whenever I started building this. But meet... The Fetcher. <laughs> Someone suggested to me... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to dig the name out here quickly. Um, where are you? Blast. I can't find it. I will... I'll... Uh, Give the guy correct credit in the next scene. I think it was Misa, actually, suggested a name as a fetcher for this guy. And, uh, yeah, I, I sort of started building it with no intention of what it was going to look like. And I ended up with something at the front that looked a little bit like a dog. So, well, I kind of rolled with it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I like this guy. I think this guy's awesome. So this is the fetcher. <laughs> uh, he's going to be a small little uh, resource boat that will sort of get the job done. It doesn't look terribly impressive. It's not sort of... It's not meant to fly for a start. Jeez, you know, I could just put a couple of basic control surfaces on this. Oh no, we need an aerial AI then. No, we don't want that. Um, yeah, I think I'll just leave it as it is. It can get by okay on its own. Jeez, actually, hold on. This wouldn't take much to make it into a fully fledged thruster craft. Alright, how about you? You stay there a wee second. Let us... And do the same down here. Now he's got a slightly more doggy looking face now too, I guess. Uh, and where were those thrusters? Give me those thrusters. Direction are you pointing? You go there. You go there. Now can you use altitude thrusters? With the naval AI? It does not appear so. Well, screw it. Let's put an aerial AI in it then. Get rid of the hydrofoils. Uh, aerial AI. Hey! <laughs> I guess these can be wings now, yeah? Yeah, let's just make them wings for fun. Uh, air. Well. Yeah, I guess ailerons makes more sense, doesn't it? Hey! <laughs> uh, yeah, you're gonna go straight into that mountain, aren't you? Well, I guess it's time to save this guy then, isn't it? So we'll save him in our Let's Play Season 2 as the Fetcher! Ah, blasted builder's caps. And we now have a basic uh, resource tug uh, that goes... Oh, I tried to let this guy off his leash, but here we go. Uh, 71 meters per second. So yeah... Perfect. <laughs> that is excellent. Let's cap off the top here with a couple of beams. Just, well, I guess it doesn't matter too much. Not fit. Damn you, of course you won't fit. You'll fit. And let's put two meter ones in here. There we go. What a cost actually. 27K, that's pretty reasonable. That'll do nicely. So we'll need to build one of those guys whenever we get back to the campaign. Now oh, look at his little tongue. Isn't he cute? <laughs> so anyway, right, I'm going to um, finish up here and go into the campaign again and paranoidly resave everything like I do every time. And uh, yeah. Okay, so we're back at home base. And just having a little shifty around the map to make sure everything was hunky-dory. Uh, it seems that there is no one coming to get us, which is very nice indeed. And one of these could spawn a ship fairly soon. I think. Can you spawn? Or do they. Does anyone know offhand, and say so in the comments, do enemy fleets, do they spawn randomly from squares, or do they have to come from the home base? I know if you kill the home base, they stop spawning, but I don't know if that's the only place they originate from. So if anyone knows that offhand, just yeah, mention it in the comments. I'd appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, we're back at Roosers. Uh, Roosers? Ruger's starting platform, and we were going to build a, what do you call it? Bulldog. There's the Bulldog. Let's get the Bulldog out, and we'll have a wee quick chat about what this guy does. Oh, for this time, spawn distance, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I want it to be 100% built, so let's load you in. There's actually the price, you can see it in the background there, 141 natural, 14k natural, 29k metal, 7k oil, 10k scrap. Not terribly expensive, not really, really cheap, but not terribly expensive. 
but you'll see just how powerful this guy is. Um, and because of this guy, I'm actually going to be turning the difficulty up. In fact, let's just do that now. Uh, options. I'm going to campaign options, and we're going to go all the way to the top. Because I've been using this guy in testing a little bit. And he can very comfortably take out a plunderer and a couple of other ships at the same time. He can easily deal with flying squirrels. He can comfortably solo the crazy fleet. And let's just say that Ruger did a really bloody good job with this guy. It's a hydrofoil based thruster craft. And as you can see, I'm getting built here. I added the paint job, it was bland when I got it. But it's called the Bulldog, and he tried to make it look a little bit like a Bulldog's nose. There's a cannon to go on the top here. It's got eight Squirrel Hunter missiles, if you, you might have seen them in the last video, just with the patch updates. It's got a sticky flare launcher on the back here, two lovely big thrusters. Uh, it goes about 30 to 40 meters per second at full rate. Um, it's got a significant amount of fuel, which is very nice, which means it's suitable for long distance operations. It's perfect. Can do a lot of battles at once. And on the inside here, it's, oh, it's a bit cramped. And we've just been fully built, which is nice. It has, uh, these are the shells. And these have become our general purpose shells because they're so bloody good. Uh, gunpowder casing, inertial fuse, 2 HE, composite. On the other side, there is the exact same warhead with a tracer, which is very nice. Uh, and the tracer is in the correct auto loader to always fire first, which is always nice. So yeah, this guy is super powerful. There's also a really cool idea that he had at the front here. It has hydrofoils, or not hy hydrofoils, heli spinners mounted forwards. So whenever it's, uh... oh, it's got a PID controller. Cool, didn't know that. Got a fleet, um, a patrol card as well, which is nice. Um, I'll show you how to use that actually. It's, it's quite handy. Um, the only trouble at the minute is that you are unable to what is it? Uh, oh, blast. There you are. Speed move? Yes, that's the right AI. Um, whenever you're using this, uh, if you have like the Bulldog selected, it'll show you all of their AIs, and you have to get to the one with the patrol card on it to do this. And you go patrol, I'll set route one, you go here, then there, and then here, and you can hold shift to do the next part, part of it, and that's your patrol, patrol route. And he'll go and do that himself, as long as he's in play. And I don't believe they'll follow it when they're out of play, which is a bit meh. Uh, but hopefully we'll see that sort of functionality in the future. Uh, let's just go and have a look at the guy, and as he follows his patrol route. Hey! I think it looks great, whenever it's floating about there, these lovely little bobs in the waves. But um, I actually think, I know he said he wants to make it look like a bulldog, but it looks like a Koopa Troopa from Mario. Or, if anyone plays League of Legends, it's uh, an awful lot like Ramus. But, yeah, very cool ship all the same. It looks great. I, uh, I'm quite happy with the paint job, too. Yeah, so that's the Bulldog. Um, and I'm actually going to bring this guy out, and he's going to clear a good few squares for me. Uh, my plan here is, and the reason that I wanted a very fast collection method, is I'm going to take this guy out on his own, no support at all, except, well, obviously the the fetcher that I'm going to build now. He's going to be running support, but he's only going to be picking up resources. He has no guns. So, yeah, let's pull him out of combat, just or out of play, before he runs into something. Uh, I'm going to send the bulldog out to kick some ass out here, uh, clear up a couple of these squares, and I'll do a quick montage of combat for you. So, uh, yeah, we'll get him out and about, and we'll get the fetcher in cleaning up and fetching afterwards. So let's get the fetcher into play. So we're going to have to load home sweet home again. Bulldog, I don't want you in play. I only want the fortress. Come here, you. And you, and we want a fetcher. And hold till it's 100% built. <laughs> let's get this guy out of this fleet, and let's get the fetcher out of this fleet as well. And we'll... We don't want them in the same fleet, actually. That's a really bad thing. Or it would be a really bad thing. So you can go over here. You're going to be heading off on your own so fast. Compared to the other fleet. It's, geez, are you done already? Reap, you are. Nice one. <laughs> of course, he's very, very cheap. So um, we are running pretty low on natural. But I'm hoping that this little 
combat venture should pay off pretty well. The beauty of this guy, I mean, he's got like 60,000 fuel on board, so he can fly away to his heart's content. I realize I'm going to have to change that to a complex controller, or not a complex, uh, a vehicle controller as opposed to a ship controller. But he will do a good job of uh, holding up the rear for us and taking all of the cargo from there back to base, which would be very nice. So, we're going to get all these guys out of play again. And I am going to find some deep water guard to shoot at. So enjoy the montage. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the little montage there. You see the Bulldog is crazy powerful. I know it wasn't going up against anything terribly, you know, intimidating there, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty nippy craft for all, for what it is. Now, at the minute, I'm bringing the Fetcher down here so that I can dump off some of the resources that it picked up. It got a bunch of metal and, uh, metal and natural, so, yeah, sweet. So, we want to get rid of everything here, actually. We dump all of those things. We don't want any of that. We don't want the crystals. Why are you keeping the crystals? Stop giving me crystals. Darn it. Eh, whatevs. He's got some crystals on board. Uh, so yeah, um, that's probably going to be more or less it for this episode. Uh, I've, we got quite a bit done there, didn't we? Um, that cleared out, what, five squares? Uh, I don't want to go too heavy into killing, taking this one out. Um, I want to do this sort of uh, next episode and take out these two villages and stuff. And uh, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to go about doing that just yet. I have the fear that if I bring the bulldog in here, he's going to crash straight into the ground here. So I might want to think about avoiding that. Or maybe put together something new to deal with these. But for now... I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Any likes, subs, or comments are really, really awesome. I love hearing from you guys, and I read every single comment. As always, take it handy, and have a bloody good day.